You're listening to But Wait, There's Lore, hosted by Pride. I am a god! Only on Nordrasil Radio at nordrasilradio.com. This podcast may contain harsh language. Listener discretion is advised. This podcast is brought to you courtesy of Skype. Welcome to But Wait, There's Lore, right here on Norgeso Radio and NorgesoRadio.com. I am Pride. Today, I am joined by two of my great co-hosts here. We've got, first off, Bestby. Go at it, my friend. Introduce hey. yourself. Hey, what's up, guys? Bestby, you know, no correlation with Best Buy. Never. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, we're also joined by Shang. Hi. I'm sad. But hi. So why, are you, why are you sad? Why am I sad? Because I have a really low grade in algebra. But that's besides the point. I'm here to spend time with you guys. Let's do this. Right yes. on. Sh- Shang is sad. Sad panda. <laughs> sad yes. panda. I don't, I don't sad. think he's as sad as Blondie is right now. Blondie, of course, being... The producer of the show, and uh, apparently his computer has uh, has kind of shat on him on them today. Um, had a lot of trouble this morning getting uh, getting the show ready to go and things like that. I actually had to step in and play some music for a little while, which I had a lot of fun and I, I, I played much much more than I uh, was supposed to. And I think he got a little annoyed with it, you know. And uh, so I gotta I gotta say. Blondie's probably having the worst day there, Shang. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, that's probably <laughs> a worst day for your computer to just crap out on you as soon as you're about to do something. It's gotta suck. Right, yeah, definitely sucks. Um, I, I could not... I could not imagine not having my computer. Like, I have this computer, which is my main computer, and then just in case something happens to this one, I, I seriously, I have a backup. Like, not out of the box, nothing. It's just, it's there in case something happens to this one and I need it. I have a laptop for that. Yeah, that's what I had until my gaming computer crashed, and now I'm on this crappy 2005 Dell computer, so... That's what I nice have good quality microphone, Mr. Show Off. Yeah, well, that, that's kind of in my favor. I've had to return this thing about five times in the last year, so there's <laughs> always that. There's always that. Right on. All right, guys. Today on the show, we're talking about King Varian Wren and the awesomeness that is. King Varian Wren. And of course, you know, we're going to get into a little bit of theory graphic and things like that as usual, but before all the Horde fans are all like, oh, I'm done, I'm out, no, I'm, I'm clicking, can't listen to this show, it's about the Alliance, da 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 right? Don't worry, we're going to get to the Horde in this show, you know, we gotta, we got to, so don't worry, we, Horde we gotta fans support. will get something too. Ooh, wait, 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 yeah. wait, wait. Vampire Kid, you are not allowed to leave. You are my new algebra tutor. You're not budging. <laughs> now you may continue. <laughs> no. Yeah. We, we gotta support all sides. Alliance, Horde, and, you know, whatever's in between. Well, whatever that may end up being. Yeah. And, of course, he was, uh, he was referring to some folks in the IRC chat room. If you want to join the IRC chat room, you can. There's a ton of people in here. I uh, want to go ahead and get that out of the way so we can get the flood of joins uh, out there. But if you go to www.norgesillradio.com and click on the chat button, it's going to be a Java applet. It's going to load right there for you. All you got to do is put in your name and hit connect, and you're going to be in the chat with me, with Shang, with Bespy, with Blondie, with everyone else that's listening to the show. So, mm-hmm. with that said... Let's get started, shall right. we? Best be yeah. take it off, man. Where, what, 
What do we know about Varian Wren? Well, the first thing we know is during his very early childhood, he was born by King Lane, I believe it was the third or the second, forgive me, and when the orc forces invaded Azeroth and just wrecked all of Stormwind's land, Elwyn Forest, burned everything to the ground, just massively slaughtered people. As they approached Stormwind, the only true fortified city in all of the human kingdoms of Stormwind, uh, Lothar began holding off several different battalions of orc troops that just basically smashed themselves into the wall, getting killed. Eventually, though, they got overran, and King Lane himself was assassinated. In such, uh, Lothar took uh, the young King Varian and left with him on a ship, as well as the citizens that they could evacuate and, like, not very many troops. Something along the lines of 20. That's uh, the beginnings. And then, after they reach... Lordaeron, they go about uh, basically searching and going and sending messengers as well as Lothar and himself and basically the king and anyone they could get to go with them, the soldiers and anyone that wished to fight to the Lordaeron king. When reaching them, Varian himself went off into the rest of the castle and King Leonidas basically treated him like his second son. Him and Arthas played, sparred, and Arthas was actually rather jealous of him, as well as Varian was jealous of him. Kind of had that rivalry going on between each other. Yeah. Well, it wasn't really a rivalry. It was more along the lines of a playful friendship involving dueling. It could be a rivalry, depending on how you see it. Yeah, yeah. Um, definitely. I mean, it's, it's kind of cool to go back in, in time and whatnot, and you actually realize that uh, Varian Wren and, and Arthas Menetha were, were pretty good friends in their childhood, and, and it kind of you know even went on a little more as they grew older. Of course, uh, with everything that happened with Varian and you know everything that happened with Arthas, of course that that friendship could never last. But it's cool to go back in time and kind of you know realize that you know some of these some of these major characters really go back that far. Yeah, because you got to think about it in a widespread band. Most of the heavy lore characters and the leaders of the separate factions, they've been around for a long time. They've seen a lot of war, a lot of death, and just a lot of very chaotic and uh, death in their life. Yeah, definitely. But go ahead. Let's. Yeah. Uh, we, we've talked a little bit about that. Let's talk about. Um, let's talk about his parents for just a second. Just so we can have a little bit more background. So, uh, who wants to take that? You want to take that, Shang? Talk about his parents a little bit? His parents? Well, Barry and Rin basically... I don't know. I'm distracted right now. Hold on one second. I'm thinking. <laughs> what, are you, what, are, what is distracting you? Right now, uh, well, I just got a very distressing text message. So, there's that. Uh... You got a very distracted. Is it a personal text message that you need to it's take care personal. of? It's a personal. Well, it can wait till after the show, but yeah. All right. Well, yeah. how, how about Best B? Why don't you take over for him so so he can take care of uh, whatever's happening there? All right. I think that would be best. All right. So, as you know, his father was King Lane. His father was the ruler of the Kingdom of Azeroth during the First War. He was also the child king of uh, Adamant Wern III. And how he died was, as we know... Uh, hold on. <laughs> Anyways, as he died, ten years later, uh, a mysterious stranger came to him. Uh, Garona. Hal Forsen, I believe her name is. I don't half remember working. exactly. It's Garona yes. Half Orkin. Very, <laughs> very clever naming processes going on at Blizzard when you've got a character, you know, who's a half orc named uh, Half Orkin. Hey, Goliath, I do believe it's Half Orson. Orson? Y'all. Yeah. 
<laughs> Anyways. No, it's half she... I'm calling it. It's half organ. Okay, it's half organ. <laughs> Anyways, she herself. I win was... again. <laughs> you always win, Pride. She herself was under the control oh, of uh, the Shadow Council. Being basically her little minion, she killed King Lane through a very swift and assassination attempt. After that, she ran away and basically caused more distress in the Fallen Kingdom as the orcs were at the very same moment attacking the front gates where most of the Alliance forces were comprised instead of guarding King Lane himself. And... She basically took the head back to the council where Gul'dan was sitting and waiting to prove that she had done the deed. And she knew from a vision that she saw in Karazhan Ker- that she was fated to kill uh, the one man that she would accept as her love. And that has something to do with how King Lane actually had a, uh, what's it called, an affair with her. With, yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> A dark affair. I'm done now. Yes. A. An affair. Let's just go with that. A malicious affair. Mm. Mm. (laughs) Yes. Mm. I I, kind of wish we had, like, the webcams going, because you just see me just shaking my head in disappointment. (laughs) (laughs) uh, I, I can imagine that, too. Just, oh, God. No, I already saw that every time I... Every time I begin speaking, I see that. You know that? Every time. Just well, shake. Well, that's because he doesn't like you. It's but true. That's what it ends up being. Let us strike the record, everybody. It's true. It's true. We've got, a, we've got an interesting... Interesting little quick deal we can kind of answer here to get back onto the, uh, the lore. Uh, they want to know why Azeroth was called Azeroth back in the day and now it's called Stormwind. Well, it was called the Kingdom of Azeroth at the time because I believe, don't quote me on this, that uh, they believed they were the only actual establishment besides the Kingdom of Arathi. The Kingdom of Arathi and the Kingdom of Azeroth were the only two, basically the north and south, if you would. So... They basically created their own kingdoms, and as time went on, the Kingdom of Azeroth developed into the Kingdom of Stormwind because they weren't the only ones around anymore. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. I, honestly, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure about it. I've always just thought that um, it used to be called the Kingdom of Azeroth, and then when they kind of wrote more lore. When Metzen kind of uh, brought more lore into everything, it, it was just changed to the Kingdom of Stormwind, as to not not to be confusing with the continent and things like that. Probably also, just to not confuse people. He probably has some like bullshit reason somewhere in some like inconspicuous place in the Warcraft archive. It's just like hidden there. It's like a little post-it note on the side of a great library bookcase. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, there another theory is that they, they could have just taken the name considering the Azotha were one of the first games. Well, no, nah, I guess that would be more of an Arathi, right? Never mind. That's a sad name to me. I just got that wrong. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, now that we've got that cleared up, skip back to Varian Ren. Let's talk about... Varian Wren's rule leadership, if you will, um, before yeah. he was kidnapped. Before he was kidnapped. Alright, I was about to say, well, it depends. When? Because his leadership changed before and after he was kidnapped. Yeah, so we're going to talk about before he was kidnapped. So this is back when everything is not completely great, but not too terribly bad. Mm-hmm. For for him, anyway. Alright, well, as I'm sure we all know, uh, King Terranus was helping to rebuild Stormwind with the help of the other kings, being that it was Varian's right to take the throne of Stormwind again. 
And as such, he was officially crowned King of Stormwind at the age of 18, I believe. And He's pretty young, for sure. Yep. Because of Varian growing up with King Terranus and truly feeling that need to take up the throne and become the king he needed to be for his people, he turned into a very clever and noble king, feeling a father's pride as he had grown a ta- er, he, Terranus, was feeling a father's pride as he uh, had grown attached to Varian with their constant interaction. Yep. And as such, Varian himself, uh, with his reign of king, reign as king, was very political in the sense that he was very clever and qu- quick-witted to the various political factions that were trying to gain his favor, or try to relinquish it if that is such the case and as all this different turmoil was going on with the dark portal and the orcs coming back again he was he found the woman Tiffin I believe that's how you pronounce it Tiffin Uh, I'm not sure yes Tiffin Rin uh, the wife of Marion and uh, the mother of Anjuin Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's basically how his rule went, just very clever and quick-witted until the point when Tiffin was slain by... Was a rock, Rona. a straight... No, well, no, no. Yeah. What are you speaking of? Tiffin was or, not killed no. by Corona. Tiffin yeah. was killed by a rock during the guild, uh, the Stonemason Guild's riots. Yes, mm-hmm. because they were refusing to uh, work as not getting paid by Stormwind anymore. Well, we're actually going to get into that little aspect of this story when we get back from this quick little break here. However, before we go on that little break, I do want to remind everyone that at the end of all of the broadcasts of Lore, of, uh, but wait, there's Lore. I almost said Lore for noobs there. Yes, you heard me right. You can send in emails that we will answer. Like, that can be anything from questions, comments, fan mail, hate mail, whatever you want. Go ahead and send it our way. You can send those emails in to lore at omfg.fm, and we will get to all of those towards the end of the show. But when we get back, we're going to be talking once again about Varian Wren and uh, what happened to him with his kidnapping. You're listening Go ahead, to Notice Hill Radio. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you courtesy of Skype. Listening to Nodrazil Radio. We are your concept World of Warcraft companion. Nodrazil Radio. Now, I know that you can't talk, Blondie, but I'm, I'm very interested to know where you got those uh, those deals that you just played. Like That was actually pretty pretty awesome. Pretty well done, I must say. Luke pretty well done. Luke sent them to me. Luke sent them to you. Okay, nice, nice, nice. All right, so we are back right here on But Wait, There's Lore on Nordisco Radio at NordiscoRadio.com. And we are talking about Varian Wren, King Varian Wren, ruler, leader of the Alliance. And we're also going to be talking about uh, some other things as well. But for now, we're talking about Varian. And where we're at in the Varian story happens to be his kidnapping and the, the fall of Stormwind uh, politically and all this other good stuff that happened. It's a very interesting time for the king and very interesting time for Stormwind itself. But before we get into all of that, I want you guys to listen to me real quick. There's something very important I want to talk to you about, okay? It's called donations, right? Donations keep us doing what we do. Like, that's, that's the bottom line. Donations, let us do what we do. Nordisil Radio, and I'm, I'm just I'm reading right here off the uh, the donation page. You can go to nordisilradio.com. 
and click on the donate button right up there at the top and you can kind of read along with me here. But I want to I want to kind of bring this to you guys' attention because there's a lot of awesome things in the work. But those awesome things cost money. So I'm just going to kind of scroll down here and we're going to go over this really quickly and then we can get back into the lore talking about Varian Ren. But Nordicil Radio, you know, as always, it aims to bring you the best music, the best interviews, and the best gaming entertainment. But unfortunately, there are always fees attached with that. For example, one of the biggest things is we play real music. I, I don't want to say that, you know, WoW parodies or, you know, you know, shitty basement garage band, you know, recordings aren't real music. But we play, you know, we play good artists. We play known artists. We play, you know, the good stuff, as I like to call it. But we have to pay those artists every time we play those songs. And that costs actually quite a bit of money. And donations help us to be able to continue playing those songs for you during the pre-shows and during the breaks and things like that. Not only that, but it also helps us fund awesome things such as DreamHack. We are going to DreamHack Winter 2011. This show itself actually has something really awesome planned there. We're actually going to have a live show in front of a live audience in the Nordisville Radio Arena. But for that to happen, we've got to get there. And we've got to buy the equipment. And that all comes back on you, on the donations. So, head over to NordisvilleRadio.com, click on the donate button. And if you scroll down, you'll actually see that uh, just because you're donating doesn't necessarily mean you're not getting anything back. Because there actually is a VIP program for Nordisil Radio and the donators that donate to us. There's a bronze membership, a silver membership, and a gold membership. So, check those out and see all the perks and all the awesome stuff that you get for donating. And then, uh, you know, just click the donate button. That's simple, guys. But for now, let's get back into the lore. Yay. Now that my obligational duties are done. Remember, guys, you can't email the show at lore at omfg.fm. We've got a lot of emails rolling in right now, so uh, keep them coming. We love them. We uh, will read them all, and we'll answer them to the best of our ability, so keep sending them in, lore at omfg.fm. But let's get back into the lore once and finally. Varian Wren, let's talk about his kidnapping and what that meant for the kingdom of Stormwind and Varian Wren himself. Vespi, if you want to start that off for us real quick... So I can kind of catch my breath after that long spiel, and I'll jump in and, and help you out. All right, so let's get right into it. After everything settled, after the third war, you know, after everybody found out about all the crap going down during it, uh, Varian journeyed to Theramore to speak with Jaina regarding Horde and Alliance relations. Uh, in going there, he was abducted by the Devias, who had been told of his diplomatic trip through some spy rumored to be within Stormwind. He was taken to Alcaz Island and was held captive there. It was an old kind of uh, kingdom place where they sent prisoners, like a prison, only on a secluded island in the middle of nowhere. Think of being there, by yourself. Shortly after King Varian was kidnapped, Bolvar was made uh, Regent Lord of Stormwind. As such, he vowed that he would take no precautions to find Varian in it. He would find him at all costs. But uh, Lady... What was her name? Lady Prestor was also... also became the royal advisor, and as such, she urged Bolvar to crown and to win Varian's young ten-year-old boy to be the king of Stormwind. However, he didn't have any power. He was basically a figurehead. Bolvar still held all the power. But during this time, it created a lot of political distraught amongst everybody in Stormwind. Because if your king just disappears, you're going to basically go insane and look for him because political order just begins to fall apart. Or... You may take the opportunity as a corrupt noble and begin to do naughty, naughty things with the political system without much punishment. That as well, because the king isn't around to go, Hey, you, stop it, or I'm going to kill you. You with the face! <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't think Barry and Ren really says it like that. No, you with no, the face? He, he just kind of walks up to you and stabs you. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. 
and he escaped from Alcaz Island. Well, however, there was something that occurred there that most people didn't find out until later. What occurred there was he was split into two beings by Lady Vash. Her attempt. We actually was... we actually had someone uh, bring this up directly to me, and NSL actually brought this up. Just said not too interested in Varian's lore, but actually one thing that that this person's always kind of wondered about was the whole splitting in two deal. Like what was going on with that? And so uh, this is this is your answer right here, NSL. Yeah, here comes your answer, bro. I got you. Anyways, essentially what happened was Lady Vash was going to split Varian into two pieces. The rage and all of his pent-up emotion, she was going to kill that half right there and then. As to be able to control the other half and basically have him as a figurehead of Stormwind in order to control all of his movements because she would take control by saying, I'm going to destroy Stormwind if you don't do such and such. I'm going to kill King Varian. Or, not King Varian. I'm going to kill your son, Anduin, and... The other variant, he's a pushover. He's a whiny baby. He, he'll go cry in his sleep if you say something bad to yeah. him. I do, I do want to, I do, however, want to say that it wasn't Lady Bash. It was. It Onyxia. was Anixia. Anixia, of course, being oh. the daughter of uh, Deathwing, and yeah, it was. Uh, Onyxia had her, you know, claws all up in the alliance's business at this point in time. I mean, she had, uh, you know, once Varian was kidnapped and kind of out of the picture, she kind of stepped up. And was, you know, an advisor to Anduin, who was, you know, technically in charge, but wasn't really old enough to make the best decisions in the world. So he had Lord Bolvar, and you had um, Onyxia there. Of course, you had, it is kind of like that deal. Anduin had the good side and the bad side right there. And, uh, you know, that's oh, kind of how that all went down, is basically, you know, her trying to do things the bad way and him trying to make sure that Stormwind didn't fall apart in the absence of their King Varian. Now, of course, throughout this time, like we said, he was taken to, uh, what is it, Al- I want to say like Al- Alcaz Island, right? Yeah, that Alcaz. Alcaz Island. Alcaz, okay. Alcaz Island, which you can actually go to if you go down to Theramore Island and you uh, you can actually jump into the water and swim. Um, I think you can, I don't know if they've made it to where you can get fatigued on that swim now or not. But I do know you can all, there is, a, there used to be a quest. I don't know if there's still a quest now that, you know, they've changed the whole world with the cataclysm and whatnot. But there was a quest where you could actually, where you had to fly and kind of, you know, spy on Al- Alcaz Island and uh, get some information. So you can actually kind of get there. And I, I believe some people actually, you know, went in and, and found Varian at some I, point. I right? can vouch. I can vouch for that. I actually I went and found Varian and took screenshots and it was my wallpaper for a while. Yeah, <laughs> I did as well. And I gotta say, he really looks weird. That, that's all I'm gonna yeah, say. He, he, like, he, he looks way different than anything else, you know? <laughs> He's like wearing the oddest armor and the, has the oddest hairstyle. Yeah. yeah, and then he's got that blue like kind of vest thing. And then he's got the like gold crown belt thing. It, it looked really yeah the stupid. the old the old Varian Ren model that maybe a hundred people actually got to see in game. Like I don't I don't think a lot of people actually swam all the way out there and, and went and found him. But I, I will say that yeah the old armor and the old skin and all that stuff was really bad. It, <laughs> like uh, original Blood Elves bad bad like it was just terrible. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, but it was yeah that definitely. Bad. Um, so yeah, the new the new model is fantastic and it really fits him and all that stuff. So that's that's good. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's also interesting to note he was at this point he was on Alcaz Island and he was in fact split in two, and he had two very distinct uh, personalities. One was uh, a very charming side of him, very carefree, very childish, wanted to have fun. Wanted to, you know, go out to parties and wanted to, uh, you know, flirt with women and things like that. And that was the one, and that, was the one that uh, found himself back in Stormwind for a little while. Actually found himself back in Stormwind because I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, and you may, you may know a little bit more about this particular aspect of this than I do. But I, uh, what was the reasoning for him coming back? Like, 
I don't think he found himself there. I'm pretty sure Onyxia brought him there, but I'm not sure of the reason Onyxia brought him there. Uh, as I said, only I said it Lady Vash instead of Onyxia, as many people corrected, but I wasn't paying attention. Anyways, she brought him there basically to be a figurehead. So she could make him say anything she wanted to, and project it upon the people. Oh hey, this is your king, uh, give me extra money, instead of worshipping that person, you're gonna worship this guy. Instead of doing that, you're gonna do this. Basically, involving new laws and different things that normally wouldn't be done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, apparently, apparently we're lagging on the stream right now. Oh, uh, uh, yep. Uh, apparently. Uh, wonderful. Lag. Oh, the day. So, uh, listen, listen to the background music. Wandy, take us out. Don't, don't play any music. Just, uh, you know, take us off air for a minute so we can try and figure that out real quick. Alright, so, uh, hopefully we have the issues resolved. I guess we'll find out in about 30 seconds or so whenever we actually, uh, get back to the listeners' ears and whatnot. They'll be able to tell me if I'm still sounding like a robot and... Or if we're still lagging and whatnot. So hopefully everything is fine and we're all good and we can get back into things. Uh, of course, now I've totally forgotten where the hell I was at in this story. So someone remind me, please. Um, best beat. You can do that. You're paying attention. Were you? Were yeah. I was, I, I someone had to have been we, paying attention. No, no, no. <laughs> we, we were right after where Varian was brought back to Stormwind by a Nick. Oh, yeah. We were talking about the reason he was brought back to Stormwind. All right. We got that out of the way, right? We got the the reason behind that? Yeah, we, we tossed that out. She brought him back basically to be a figurehead. That way she could right. control everything in the city. Alright, right. So the that's that's one aspect of Varian Run. Basically, Varian, who was in Stormwind at the time, was being totally manipulated by Onyxia. And, and the reason that he had that personality is because it was an easy personality to manipulate. Um, of course... When you don't care about anything, you just give all of your responsibilities to someone else. And those someone else's would have been Onyxia and Bolvar. So really, all Onyxia had to do was convince Bolvar of what she wanted. And then everything would be A-OK, -okay, right? Well, yeah. there, was a little, uh, there was a little kink in her plan. There was just a small little kink in that plan. Um, when you split someone in two, the other side has to be somewhere, right? Now, yeah. Vespi, tell us how this other variant got loose and into the world. Well, essentially what happened was during the casting process that Onyxi was doing to split the two variants in half, he escaped his confinement because Onyxia was waiting to kill him until the ritual was fully complete and everything was done. However, he escaped his confinement, being the badass that uh, that half of Varian is. He escaped <laughs> half from of his confinement. Yeah, half of Varian. He's half a man now. Anyway. <laughs> Only half. He escaped his confinement and just hightailed it as fast as he could off of the island, fighting his way through different kind of, uh, what are they called? Sea creatures? In order Naga to... And Gorlocks no. and Murlocks and stuff? Essentially, across the <laughs> island that had now <laughs> taken over. Dish. And he entered the water and swam as far as he could, eventually the rip currents taking him to Durotar. Upon reaching Durotar, he was seen by a passing orc caravan fighting a uh, cro crocolis? Right? That's how they're called? Yeah, yeah crocolis. Crocolis. Using only a stick, he was fighting off several crocolis on the edge of Durotar. The passing caravan just happened to be led by a gladiator trainer, trainer called Regar Earthfury. And seeing how uh, Varian was able to just beat down these crocs with a stick, he took Varian and threw him into a cage with a uh, brol bear mantle. And all Valera bear mantle at Varesis. Yeah. yeah, Valera Sanguinar. Valera, thank Valera. Sanguinar, you. Sanguinar, I think the last name was. Yeah. Anyways. And yes. he gave Varian the nickname Crocbait in order because he was, you know, fighting the Crocolis. 
and to help him remember his past during the night as they were basically being carried in the cages, Brol Bearmantle placed Varian in a trance where he saw a vision of himself as a child in a burning city. At that point, he had no idea what the vision meant, he had no idea what the city was, so he just continued with what he soon became to know. And after arriving in Orgrimmar, Rikar started training them all. And Varian... Granted, refused. Varian did not need a whole lot of training. Not a not whole at lot at all. <laughs> he was very adept in uh, fighting, shall we say. He was already a badass. He didn't need no training. Yeah. However, something that stuck with him through his memory loss was that he didn't like orcs. That's something that he knew. Varian, as such, refused to engage in fighting for the orcs' frivolous laughter, for their amusement. As such, uh, the training grounds labeled him as a troublemaker, but Reghar permitted him to continue with how he was, not training and basically sitting on the sidelines. When the team was drawn into a fight against Sparkle... Spark Eye? Sparkle Eye? I don't remember. But his gladiator dream? Varian did pick up a sword to defend his teammates. However, he would not pick up a sword until they were in dire strength and needed his help, because he would not fight for their amusement. Though his team emerged victorious from the battle, they were injured and exhausted from the fight. Uh, Raghar offered no sympathy for them. As he permitted the Haiku Steel Edge, you know, the Haiku Steel Edge, I believe, clan, to take advantage of their weakened state and attack them in the ring. With both with both the teammates defenseless, Val- Valina or yeah, Valeria, excuse me, and oh, Brawl yeah, were very Valeria. Yeah, were injured and Varian took it upon himself to fight Haiku Steel Edge himself. And he slew him in combat. From mm, that haiku. Point. Yeah, haiku, like uh, the five word, seven syllable thing. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I never understood. Ooh, it's, so That's the... it's poetry. Not a big fan of poetry <laughs> there. Not a not a whole big literature fan there, Pride. <laughs> I, I, hate, I, hate, I hate reading. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to read. Alright, anyways, so from that battle on, Varian uh, was always expected was always expecting the unexpected in the Crimson Ring. However, he had to follow the rules of combat as it was. But something that worked in Varian's was favor was with the rules of combat in the Crimson Ring, when you slew somebody, you were able to take their weapons as your own. So he inherited Haiku's twin orc blades and they were much better better than his simple sword that he had. Mm-hmm. And later on, he Rekhar led the trio into the armory of the Crimson Ring in the Hall of Legends, where, after seeing a familiar lion-headed belt, Varian received another flashback, a bald-bearded man staring at him on a boat and calling him lad. That's all he could see from the image. As such, he, uh, didn't know what it meant, he just knew it was there. Eventually, the three of them traveled to Dire Mall and Feralas, where the the gladiatorial contest took place, and after several different battles, they emerged victorious from the the Crimson Ring Tournament. Impressed by Varian's skills with a blade, the crowd gave him the orcish name, I think? Logosh, which which means Ghost Wolf. Uh, also referring ghost- to also referring to the ancient uh, Goldrin, yeah, Goldrin that uh, was a ferocious big old wolf beast. Has a couple yeah. of shrines in game. Yeah, in he's in game at a couple of times. He is in at game at a couple of times. Uh, after the tournament, Rhaegar took Logash and Brawl to the torn city of Thunderbluff where they were both permitted to undergo a cleansing ritual in the pools of vision there. Varian, or Logash now, saw another vision, a fair-haired female who was 
a, obviously his wife holding an infant boy. However, he didn't know who this woman was or who the boy was. He just felt some very deep emotional connection with the two. But just as he was relieving from that image, his vision was interrupted by a cave elemental that had been haunting the pools of vision. Varian just kicked its ass, plain and simple. Just just beat it into the ground. Dead. Mm. And thanks for defeating the cave elemental, Brawl and Logash were invited to the tent of Rune Totem. Uh, what was his first name? Hamal, I think. Amal yeah, Rune Totem. El- yeah, Elder Druid Arm. of the Torn. Varian, uh, Varian was told the legend of the original Logash. Massive white wolf beast renowned for its fer- ferocity in battle. And that's essentially all he learned there. But Azeroth, according to the Archdruid, the wolf's legend extended through Azeroth to the trolls, the goblins, the dwarves, and everyone. In each tale, Logash unyielded will and sheer ferocity, enabling him to push through boundaries of the afterlife to aid his people. Hamel then gave Logash a feather, which Brawl immediately recognized to be a hippogriff. The night elf used to call Sharp Talon from Ashenvale had one, and immediately made a bid for freedom with Logash. Brawl and Logash eventually reached the Cenarian Enclave in Darnassus and were summoned to dinner by Tyrande Whisperwind. Tyrande sent the two to Thamor, where Jaina Proudmore would help to restore Logash's memories. Upon arriving in Thamor, Jaina vowed to Logash that she would unravel the mystery that surrounded him, and called it upon her chamberling, Agewin, to help. Reaching the dark ore that surrounded Logash's memories, visions revealed in this weird kind of visage, the birth of his son, the death of his wife, and a new darkness which he didn't understand. Despite the invisible mental wall that was preventing Jaina and Agewin from furthering from further devel- delving into his memories, they were able to confirm that he had been traveling to Theramor and that he was in fact Varian Wynn. The Lost King of Stormland. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was an interesting it's, story, it's, Vespi. It, it's, it sounds like you were reading from like a movie <laughs> script. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, and then he discovered, and then the, and then credits hit, and then it's a it's an Oscar. Import the credits. <laughs> <laughs> Import credits. <laughs> wow. All right. So, we need to take a commercial break right now, <laughs> and uh, we'll be back in a moment to uh, finish up this very and Ren story. This podcast is brought to you courtesy of Skype. You are listening to Notre Dame Radio. We are your concept World of Warcraft companion. And we are back right here on Nordisil Radio at NordisilRadio.com. This is, but wait, there's Lauren. We are talking about Varian Wren. And uh, during the commercial break, we're actually talking about uh, all these movies that I got. Because uh, Blockbuster went out of business. So we didn't actually you know, talk about anything real. Mm-hmm. At all. Yeah. Like we were supposed At to, all. and then we just got on to what movie I should watch afterwards. Uh, because you know that's that's much more interesting. <laughs> the wonderful, the Sorry. wonderful life of of uh, a podcaster, right? Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> make a sitcom about it. The wonderful life of the podcasters, <laughs> featuring pride. The podcast. You know I would actually, I would actually make for some great reality TV if a TV crew followed me around. <laughs> <laughs> in the morning which, which speaking of of that people following me around uh, <laughs> BlizzCon 2011 it, it was looking like I wasn't gonna go I'll be honest with you you know as, uh, some things came up it just it looked like I wasn't gonna be able to go didn't uh, wasn't able to get in there for the tickets and things like that but uh, the great uh, Morphar helped me out quite a bit 
And it uh, looks like I will, in fact, be going to BlizzCon, and there will, in fact, be people there following me around with a camera everywhere that I go. Like, literally, we're talking the whole five days I'm there. Someone is going to be filming Absolutely. pretty much everything I do. So it's going to be kind of weird and awkward, but uh, I think it'll make for some great videos for Nordic Cell Radio and, and yeah. things like that. So, um, of course, Jesse Cox will be there as well. And uh, so if you, any of you guys are going to BlizzCon uh, this year, be sure to come and find us and say hi and, and all that stuff. I'm pretty sure we're going to do some kind of a, a fan meetup of some kind. So, uh, you know, we'll probably, if not, you can find me pretty much every night at the Hilton Hotel Open Bar. And, um, <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just following the, I'm just following the BlizzCon ritual, you know. The, the Hilton Hotel is always uh, where it's at. You went no, you didn't go to BlizzCon. You went to PAX, didn't you, Blondie? Never mind. Never mind. I'm just but saying, uh, uninvited. Jeez, I want to be. I want to follow you around. Uh, well, up. actually, actually, uh, the the person who's going to be you know behind the camera is actually one of Nordisk Radio's own. It's going to be uh, Boom Body DJ Boom Body is going to be uh, following me around for the most part. That's and, lovely. And you know, a, uh, an entire legion of fangirls will be there. Yes. Before. No, shrieking and throwing their, throwing their Alex Straza panties at you. That, that's what's oh, going to happen. Yeah, you, uh... You guys... I don't know. I think Blondie's heard that story. I'll tell you guys that story uh, during the next commercial break. <laughs> it's a little too risque. We may we may have some, uh, you know, 13-year-old kids listening to the show. I don't want to talk about, you know... Oh, my God! Red paint and uh, all other sorts of things, uh, but uh, you know, Sylvanas is just as hot in real life as she is in the in the. This, yeah, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> but uh, you know, we are talking about World of Warcraft yeah, lore yeah. here on But Wait, There's Lore. That is what the show is about, right? So let's get right back into it. Uh, we got to wrap this up. We're we're right here at the uh, the one hour mark. It's uh, four oh six p.m. my time. It's like you know wherever you are in the world. Five, right four. there on the hour mark. So we got to start wrapping this up so we can get into some questions. Dun, 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 dun. So, Vespi, try not to make this one a book. All right, but wrap this up for us. Wrap up <laughs> try the not story, to... this story I... of uh, of Varian Wren and the and those being split up. So let's let's get back to uh, let's try and get back to uh, Varian being one again. So that we can get into the more recent stuff where we can start theory crafting, because that's what I like. I like theory crafting. I do too. Also, no so, diatribe. Get to it, son. <clears throat> Don't be a All small right. son. All right, so let's get right into it. Uh, I'm going to skip a whole comic section because it's really just him sitting on a boat. Anyways. I'm on a boat, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a boat! Okay, so. Yeah. When Logash steps into Stormwind with his friends uh, and Jaina Proudmore, well, not Jaina Proudmore, they were stopped by General Marcus Jonathan, I believe, or whatever. Marcus gen- Jonathan. Yeah, the the guy that's sitting at the statue of Terralian. Anyways, under the direct jurisdiction of Katrina Prester or Anixia, they were ordered to be captured and executed right there under the spot. Windsor succeeded in convincing Marcus of uh, Logash's loyalty to Stormwind, as they had previously served together under Terralian. And Katrina Prester herself hesitated hastily gathered the soldiers only to have the false bane tell her that she was disobeying the chain of command and was not in charge of Stormwind. So he kind of grew some balls right there. Grew some balls. Yeah. <laughs> Entering Stormwind Keep, Logash yeah. declared Katrina's masquerade was all over and called her by her true name, Anixia. Revealing her dragon spawn at dragon form, if any of you ever did the quest and transforming multiple guards in the keep into dragon spawn. Yep. So, yeah, that's something. And then I, Log- I played that on Moonguard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We had a, we had a uh, we had a little naked human female teabagging Anixia too. No, no. no. Uh, she was distracting while we uh, down. It was fun. Nice. Anyways, Lagash <laughs> engaged his doppelganger, the other variant 
claiming he threatened the stability of his kingdom and nearly caused the alliance standal span, only to have his doppelganger retort he was starting to repress her spells and regain control of his actions. So, we basically know that uh, the Varian, the one that was a pussy, has begun regaining control over his will. And in such stated that we, we prefer w- we prefer a vagina. Okay. Yeah. When we when we speak <laughs> such language, we prefer a vagina. Okay. Vagina. He, he gained a vagina back. Sound good? No, that that's totally the opposite. But go ahead. <laughs> he lost his vagina. He lost his vagina. How's that? All okay. I know is apparently I have been corrected. It is not. Moon guard, it is Poon guard. So there is that fact. I'm just yeah. pointing out, just to correct myself. Well, Anduin seeing the two variants, both his fathers, clashing in mortal combat, Anduin rushed like the little child he was and urged them to stop fighting and face, you know, the giant dragon right next to them. That is, you know, attacking soldiers. Y- you know, maybe maybe that's the better thing to face. The great dragon, as such, just snatched Anduin and teleported them to her lair, daring Varian to follow her into her home where she had all her little minions and everything, regrouping with his friends and or the players, as it would be. Varian left to grieve the loss of his son and told his friends the final battle would end at Anixia's lair. In Ascension, the two Varians... Uh, relinquish their command to Olvar again. Yeah. Best be dialogue. Just, just, just remember. Just no, I, I'm not going. I'm not going for a story. Okay. Just try. L- Logash and <laughs> re- relinquished the power back to Olvar Bo- as it had been before Varian came back. Arriving in Theramore, the two Varians met up with Jaina Proudmore. She d- she told them she had discovered what dark magic was used on them to basically turn them into one of each other. At the time, she magic. thought they were cloned. Shut up. And <laughs> the dark magic was used. The dark magic that was used she found in an old tome. Jaina came up with how the theory. Anixia gained control over the other variant. And in Ascension, she was able to theory, or she was able to come up with a theory she was able to come up with a theory in order to bring the two variants back together. By using a spell that or using enchantments, excuse me around the two variants and allowed them to recall the last parts of their lives the abduction, being tied and trapped on Alcaz, Nixia using the spell, and everything. Back in Jaina's, back in Jaina's tower, the variants came to a starting conclusion that they are both the same person. Shocker there. At the same time, only half of what they should be. Jane explained that although Anixia's spell split them in half, they were both able to fight past the spell and re- regain control of who they truly were, even though they both lived as separate beings. Once being, once becoming Logash, the, gladi- the gladiator champion of the Crimson Ring, he fought in order to regain his memories and birthright. The other Varian was ransomed and returned to Stormwind. There we go. And was further... in and was further controlled by Anixia while he was under her spells. And in order to break such... In order to break the spell, leading an assault against Anixia, both variants engaged her in battle. Weapons and magic clashed with her numerous dragonkin while both sides were determined to win. Anixia cast a fear spell on Brawl and basically knocked him just way out of everything. Just we interrupt him. this to say, stop scaring the girls away in IRC chat. Sorry for interrupting you guys. <laughs> I just had um, to point that out. I, I have to scare them away. It's so much better. Not you. You're not scaring like, everyone. Everybody, it's, everybody it's, is it's all these people that are talk, making porn references out of, like... Uh, names in Warcraft like Porn Win City and Porn Grimoire. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> 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 
Becoming desperate to end the fight, Anixia began casting the spell she was going to use on Alkaz Island to kill Logash, but Logash double responded by stepping in front of the blast, saying he would he should die because Logash, or excuse me, the other variant, stepped in front of the spell, saying he should die because Logash was the embodiment the of real man. the true... Yeah, yep. the real man. The true hard... Thought man, yeah, I'm not, not willing to beside, uh, step beside that guy. It's like, no, bro, we go down together. Exactly. Okay. And the magic spell became disrupted by having the two there, and after a moment of silence, Varian emerged as two halves fused back together. So essentially, there was a big cloud of dust. Then all of a sudden, it was gone, and Varian sitting there. Varian's in there going, "You yeah. bitch, I'm gonna cut your head off." Exactly. And, and, and then a massive fight ensues. Varian Renz, Anduin gets saved. They all go home. Done. Happy. Yeah, Done. shit happens. See, you see how quickly I can wrap these things up? Like, it's just like, boom. See, best beat, Sit. best beat, long Straight, match. Time. Simple, and to the point. Pride and I, we do the summary. But we, we're very happy with short and simple. I, I go on long spiels that take, you know, 10 minutes. Shut up, you! This is why yeah. I interrupt all the time. So just go remind you to yourself. Shut the fuck up! Just wrap it up, man. Just wrap it up, man. Just wrap it up, man. Anyway. Indeed. Uh, and of course, now now that that's you know we've got that they they all go back they live happily ever after da da da. We've got uh, stuff coming on with the cataclysm and things like that. Of course, we've also got things going on in uh, Wrath of the Lich King going on with Old War that involves Varian Ren. Now, I don't think we necessarily need to go totally into all of that stuff, per se. No, However, because everybody should know all that, to a point. I'm seeing as how it happened in the game. Uh, I, I just said that, no, you're not going in depth with that, because everybody should know that general portion because it was in game. To a point. Indeed. No silence. Well, yes. that was a uh, that was that was an intentional silence. So that's that's you guys taking a breather, so that we can get back on topic. That's that's me making sure I step back from my microphone and take a deep breath, so you guys don't hear myself <laughs> breathing like I have to do right now. <gasps> right. So let's uh, let's go ahead. Let's get into a little bit of theory crafting. So long as we don't have to take a break. Let me let me check with our producer Blondie. Do we need to take a break or are we good to go? Let me know so that we can. We're good. All right, we are good. Let's talk about some theory crafting. We got ten yeah. minutes to talk about some theory crafting stuff. All right. So let's hit, let's hit this off real quick, right? We all know that the Horde right now is in, like, political turmoil. We've talked about that in the in the politics show that we did. I believe it was the second episode of Season 3. All right? Talked about the inner turmoil of the Horde. The Horde is in disarray right now, politically. However, it seems that the... It seems that the Alliance is a lot more cohesive and collective right now. They all seem to be more or less working together. So, what I want to kind of talk about here is do you think what do you think Varian's involvement with this is like is he one of the reasons that the alliance is so cohesive and and so willing to work together or do you think that this is just a collection of everyone I believe well. that uh, Varian him, himself being the Stormwind and the humans are basically the main figurehead of the alliance while the other races are very closely involved. You see him more. He's more of the politician going out to these various kingdoms and associating with them. So I think it's just Varian keeping everyone in check with what's going on, what's going through the different areas, Kalimdor, Eastern Kingdom, Northrend, where everything's occurring. Mm -hmm. So you think that it's because he's such an active leader right now? Yeah. That's what I believe. I would definitely agree. Now I don't. I won't give Varian all the credit because even even when Varian was was gone, the alliance was still pretty good. You know, they were still a pretty solid, you know, unified force. 
Uh, granted, you did have, you know, some turmoil here and there, but at the same time, the Horde was also pretty cohesive and, and together at that point because, you know, Thrall was still in power and not Garrosh, which is when, you know, all this political disarray within the Horde kind of came about is when, you know, Thrall left Garrosh in charge. Now, with the Alliance, right, I don't want to give all the credit to it because, you know, that's just... There's too the- much... There's too much history of them working together and 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 being that cohesive force to say that, you know, when Varian came back, everything just kind of boom. And on top of that, you also have the dwarves who are a little unhappy with the situation that they've been put in. And we again, we kind of hit on that a little bit in the political discussion uh, in, in week two of season three. But... What I what uh, I kind of want to what I kind of want to bring if you have something to say go ahead and say it I'm sorry I, I was gonna say that real quick you have to also realize that with the political turmoil in with the dwarves it was Varian who helped reestablish the order that was going on so that's another thing that's really pulling for the uh, Varian doing a lot in order to keep the alliance together yes but I will give credit where credit is due Varian has been a very active leader. He has been very, since he's been the short time that he's been back. I think in lore terms, he's only been back for like a year and a half, something like that, right? Mm, I think sure, he's been back a little okay. longer with that, but it doesn't matter. Just go with that. Well, Cataclysm was supposed to be a long time skip between Wrath, so I, I have no clue right now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, the, well, I, I mean, the, the general release of the timeline yet, but if there is, then please do correct me. Yeah, I'm talking to the audience on that one. <laughs> well, the, the the deal, the the whole thing about it is, in the short time that he has been back, you know, he stepped right back up into his role. I mean, he has taken charge, he has taken that leadership role, he has ran with it, he has done the best of his abilities. Now, we do have one thing, and that is that Varian does not like the Horde. Varian would prefer them to not be there at all. So uh, I, what you've got is some animosity there, and and a lot of people say that you know he's just like Thrall, but Thrall can get over it. So why can't Varian get over it? Well, there's something that I'd like to mention there. It's mm. not just Varian; it's humans in general. They're still very sore over what occurred during the second war and the first war, for that matter. And let's not forget the orc side of things. They're pretty pissed off at the humans, too, you know? Yeah, being that they Okay, but the humans didn't attack the orcs' homeland until the orcs (laughs) attacked us. I'm just saying, that was a defensive (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I I just want to say this, like, this is something that I think the Horde doesn't really understand. This isn't your planet. Like, no, <laughs> you don't. It, it, you, this isn't your home. This, you're not from here. Like you're from another you're planet, alien. bro. You're green. <laughs> Look at your skin. Tell yeah, me. And you're a not lot of people. Alien. A lot of people. A lot of you know horde players are like you know why it's our planet too. No, it's not. It, it's not it, your planet. Your it's, every every other race but the orcs on Azeroth right now. Are native other than well the undead because Dranai. they're first Dranai. yeah Draenei as well and the yeah. Draenei aren't native either. However, that's you know that's going back into they kind of crash landed here. Yeah, it, it wasn't them going. Oh hey, that yeah. looks like a nice planet. Let's go oh, take it me. over. The exactly, green. and the Draenei aren't aren't trying to take over land. Like the Draenei have stuck to their area. You know, they've got their little deal, and they've kind of, you know, they've spread out into some of the cities and whatnot. But the Horde, when they invaded, I mean, they wanted to wipe out humanity. They wanted this planet for their own, right? Yeah, that's essentially yep. it. They were like, this is our planet now. We're going to kill them so we can have a this world. Is our planet. That, that, that way we can have a world that's not dying because of bad stuff we did due to the Shadow Council, which is, you know, kind of involved in making us do this. So yeah. why are we fighting again? <laughs> uh, but, I mean, the, the whole point is, like, the orcs invaded and they sought out blood. They 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 got first blood. And the human alliance... First blood. You know, the human alliance, they counteracted it, you know, and they, they kicked some ass. They... 
Uh, they sent them all the way back to the Dark Portal. Have, most of them went back into their homeland through the Dark Portal. And then, you know, a, a group of select humans and uh, a couple Night Elf Rangers went in there after them to make sure they didn't come back. Not Night Elf, High Elf. Night Elves weren't involved. Oh, yeah. Night Elves are still chilling in their tree, bro. Some mm-hmm. Elven Rangers. How about that? Yeah, some Elven Rangers. Let's go. Actually, that's what, the unit, that's what the unit in Warcraft 2 is called. I'm okay with that. Yeah, it's alright. The forces were led by Turalyon, uh, Alaria, and Khadgar, as well as Danith Trollbane. Yes, and I cannot wait for the day that Danith Trollbane comes back and takes his proper place. Right. The, the king of Stromgard. I love Stromgard. <laughs> Stromgard got shafted. And it, it yeah. really angers me. I like Stromgard. That, that's Anyways, what I thought. If I may we... say something before the break, yes, I go want ahead. to ask. I want to ask IRC chat. In not caps, answer who do you prefer, Alliance or Horde? And I want to see what our majority fan base is by the time we get back from commercial break. I just want to see. This is testing. This is testing. All right. Well, we will be right back right after this little uh, musical break. This podcast is brought to you courtesy of Skype. You are listening to Noticeville Radio. We are your concept World of Warcraft companion. Noticeville Radio. It is that time again, ladies and gentlemen. It is, uh, but wait, there's lore right here on Noticeville Radio at NordicelRadio.com, and we are about to get right into the emails but before we do i have a uh, a special just a little announcement i want to tell you guys um as soon as this broadcast is over head over to uh to omfg youtube.com forward slash omfg kata there is a very special announcement that is going to be made some of you may know this some of you may not however it's going to be a really epic announcement something that some people have been waiting for for quite a while and it's finally coming so stay tuned to there. It should. I'm gonna start uploading it like literally as soon as uh, all this is over, and uh, so stay tuned to that. And uh, it's gonna be epic, and I'm very excited. Something that's been work been in the works for like three months. I know Blondie knows about it. I don't know if Shang or the other guys know about it. No but, idea. Uh, no yeah. clue. Something uh, something epic that's been in the works for quite quite a while. But uh, let's go ahead. Let's get into the emails and remember, guys. No, it actually has really nothing to do with Lore for Noobs. Lore for Noobs Alliance has been announced for like a month now. Uh, the Lord, like, there's already a trailer and everything for it. Anyways, let's get also, into the emails. But remember, we guys, get to the emails. I would just like to point out we have a two-thirds horde fan base. Congratulations on finding out that statistic. Also, I am not fired for flooding the IRC chat, but close to it. <laughs> <laughs> He, he, he's on the uh, ice. I'm on the pro. Ice, so he's like, oh no, oh no, oh no. I'm on no probation. Break. I'm on pro. Bro. All mm. right. So, uh, again, emails. Remember, if you want to get your email into the show, email us at lore at omfg.fm. And we'll get to those nor towards the end of the show, which is where we're at. So, let's go ahead. Let's get right back into them uh, starting with this one hello I was just wondering what's the explanation behind the technology of the ra- raises Rases? R-A-S-E-S I'm gonna assume races is what he's yeah, trying to say I, I'm going also I enjoy okay. his hello yes hello I was just wondering what's the explanation behind the technology of the races in Azeroth I mean that all the stuff the goblins and gnomes have while other races have bows and crossbows and such from someone whose name you cannot pronounce try me oh, I'm pretty that. good at it just saying yeah. uh, that's uh that's uh so I think I think we can kind of re- reiterate this question a little bit as to why are the goblins and gnomes so technologically advanced compared to the other races? Well, I always had a theory that each race, respectively, has their own little... For some reason, Blizzard has set it up so there's a balance of magic and technology. So we can have medieval kingdoms next to 
fucking uh, Nomergon and stuff like that. So uh, we have different people in different time periods. So the goblins are pretty much 20th century, mid, early, mid, you know, they got jazz music, I'm pretty sure, and stuff like that. And, you know, they developed a nuke, apparently, according to that Garrosh co- what, uh, quest. We're close to one. And, uh, while we have all of that, we also have amazing magi in places like Stormwind and such, so. So, essentially what's going on is there's a differentiation between goblins and gnomes and the rest of Azeroth. Goblins and gnomes, they have a much, a much more complex brain psyche as it would be, allowing for them to understand quicker different things. So, say they were in their own little mindset, and then the dwarves come. It takes them not long at all in order to translate their language and be able to converse with them. As happened with Common Common and Orcish, that's how the goblins were able to associate themselves with Terranus and uh, the orcs at the exact same time. They were able to comprehend the two different languages very quickly. Yarp. So that's essentially it. All right, we've got one here. It's not really a question. It's more of a, this guy wanted to go ahead and just bring something to our attention. So it says, hey, lorehounds, just wanted to bring something to your attention. In the Deathwing episode, Pride asked Dane and Shang whether or not Deathwing knew he had been corrupted and if he knew he was being used by the old gods. Both of them said no. However, in a quest, in the quest into the Dragon Queen in the Twilight's Highlands, Deathwing and Alex Straza have some dialogue. Alex Straza says she sees the hollow metal shell of a once great ally in the precious gift of the Titans wasted. Deathwing responds with, Then witness my new gifts, bestowed upon by the world's true masters. This is clearly a reference to the old gods and his knowledge of what they have done to make him the monstrosity that he is now, as well as showing that he knowingly serves them. That's from Arc Evil Angel. So, I was wrong. Well, not, necess- not necessarily. And I, I wouldn't say that we're wrong. I mean, we don't know for a fact that he's uh, he's saying that or that he's referring to the old gods. It's just he, an assumption. Well, like, we could he, edge around it, but that's the most likely. It's not like Deathwing's fucking talking about his delusional panel. It's not like we all three of us and Blondie too. We're all actually the uh, the old or the secret old gods of Azeroth. Yeah, I, I'm we're actually an old Death- god. You didn't you didn't hear yeah. the beginning of the show? <laughs> you are uh, you are Pride Wing, the devourer of virginity. I am uh, I, I am Pride Wing, the devourer of virginity. I'm also uh, I'm also a god, um, and therefore, and, and I, I'm getting older. You know, my hairline's receding and things like that. So I guess you could consider me like an old god now. So that's that's it. I mean, that's that's where it's at. I'm an old god. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what I was gonna yeah. say is. It doesn't necessarily mean that Deathwing know, knew then that he was being corrupted, but now he obviously has some semblance and he has gone to accept it. Obviously, he may or may not have complete control over his actions. The old gods might have delved so deep into his mind that they can literally control him. So, that's something we have to keep in mind. Right on. Next um, question. May I? Hello, but wait, there is lore. I was wondering if it was possible for the Forsaken, by any stretch, to turn the Forsaken back into living creatures. And also, could the Alliance and the Forsaken get along together in Lordaeron? Sorry for any spelling. Fa- any sp- fail spelling. I have problems with that. Sorry. Um, uh, yes, I can tell, but I, I think I did a pretty good job of translating. So uh, yeah. that's from our, our fan, Valkares. Uh, the answer is probably not. Yes. Probably, uh, on, on both oh, accounts. Well, well, hold on. Maybe if, you know, I don't think it would be likely, but the power does exist for, like, Alex Straza or, you know, a ritual maybe of some sort, but I don't eh, think it would be likely. Given perhaps, the possibly. possibly. But that would be a stretch of the imagination because as of right now, all we know is that if you're undead and the necrotic magics that keep you moving around break, you fall into a sack of bones. Exactly. And with humans and undead living together in Lordaeron, that's not going to happen. At all. Ever. 
I, I, I'm going to say that right now because the undead have a ravenous feeling to just take over land and continue to repopulate. They're much like the Scourge. Except only... they can't repopulate. Yeah. Yeah, they can. They uh... Not the natural way. Well, not the natural way, of course. They can repopulate now due to the Valkyrie Sylvanas has with her. Yeah. Well, now we got the Bitch Queen. Yeah, we got the Bitch Queen. Okay. Anyways, so... It would um... happen. Next, next. next yeah, we can go on to the next question. Is Dibs. it possible no, that? No, 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 no. It's, 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 is it possible that Alune is actually an old god who is going to try and make the night elves summon her sometime so she could try to release the others, and that she is not material, and that she is not a materialized? Plus, in the Temple of Alune, it says that she shaped the world with other gods. Maybe that was the old god of the Titans. I believe the other gods you're thinking of are more along the lines of Malorn and, and things like that. I, she is not an old god. Well, I'm 99.9% sure that Elun is not an old god. Actually, she has all of the elements of an old god. She has a race following her. She has people worshipping her. She may be a benevolent old god. I always had that theory. No, I don't well, think so. I don't believe she would be a benevolent old god because from what we've seen, the old gods are very bitter and kind of just want to kill stuff. So, there's that. And well, she yeah, obviously she's the only female old god. Maybe that's some. Maybe everybody else is on their period, and she's the only <laughs> one safe from it. Well, Probably. something else is if she wanted to be summoned, and she was an old god, and she wanted to be summoned into this world, she would have been able to convince the night elves to do that a long time ago. Like, Around the War of the Ancients, maybe? Yeah, basically. <laughs> they were that, summoning all kinds of shit back then. Yeah, she would have been able to make them summon her like that. It doesn't take anything. So, obviously, she's not an I old think, god. I just think it's far-fetched that she yeah. would be an old god. I mean, there's a possibility that she is, but it, it's very far out in the stretch of the imagination. Next expansion, we were all wrong. A loon is coming out from the sea. Oh my god! <laughs> all right, so someone, someone else wanted to read a question. Go for it. I wanted to read a question to. to, to, to. Um, I got the short one. How does the shaman spirit wolf form relate to shamanism? Could that be where Judaism and Calderai society derive from? From David. Mm. But um. Good question, I, David. For that, uh. I would just like to point out in every class's ability set they have RPG book class abilities such as the warlock doesn't actually no warlock can metamorphosize so to speak unless you are completely with game mechanics but apparently that's a demon hunter ability and they did push demon hunter class into the warlock class with stuff like sense demon so you know, it could be something related to that. They, it could be a uh, point where the shaman is used. It is actually a class. It's not a shaman in that case. If you're going by the RPG, and it's and lore, it's most likely a totemic shaman. I don't know the exact word for it, but uh, I know there is a fact that there, there is a certain. I think it's Farseer who can turn into a spirit wolf. So. Um, next question, real quick and real easy. Who was the first dragon and how was he or she created? That's from Sora Sonic. Uh, that's uh, Gallicron, right? Gallicron. Yeah, Gallicron. Scourge is resurrecting him. Fun stuff. But big ass proto Drake. He, yeah, big ass proto Drake. He was around before then. Well, around. And the times are like, hey, bro, you got a nice set. You got a nice body, okay? We're going to model something after you. And that's yeah, that. Done. Done. All right, and the next question is kind of long, and it's actually a little bit of theory crafting, so I want to kind of get into it a little bit. Um, this is from the Icy. It says, uh, I suppose this is going to be a very obvious question, but I don't recall you talking about this yet. Who do you, from a lore perspective, think would be a sensible main villain for the Mists of Pandaria expansion? I mean, we obviously need some strong, someone stronger than Arthas, and we don't know if we can even make it past Deathwing. But we still need a pretty strong villain. Who could be, ty who could be tied enough to Pandaria and the Pandaren that would make sense as a major villain? 
Should we expect another, more major old god? Or will they decide to make an entirely new major enemy not already in the lore, considering how little we know of the enemies of Pandaren? Perhaps... Mm, Burn uh, Legion uh, is my big, biggest guess, because the Pandaren originally left because of the abuse of magic. I'm sure they... The, and the Burning Legion came from that, I'm sure. Maybe they'd be up against that. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Perhaps something along those lines? I don't but, think we're going to see the Burning Legion back. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't believe that we'd see them back in force, at least not yet. Until we get some more lore, because I doubt they would just... Until like, Sargeras ramp. comes back, we're not going to touch him again. Yeah. Call him. Uh, I'm that calling it. We've already, we, we've already gone toe-to-toe with uh, Kill Jaden. And the next step up is, is Sargeras. And Archimond. We also got Archimond down, so... We, we it is, it is. So yeah, we killed Archimond in uh, the whole World Tree thing when he was trying to hump that damn tree. That tree, anyway. So, maybe not the Burning Legion, but maybe something involving a magical faction. They have been known to make factions before, maybe, or for a expansion specifically, so maybe... Um, I'm gonna say probably an old god of some kind. Um, I don't know. I mean, this could be a bridge expansion to where we we kind of uh, some of the stuff from the Cataclysm kind of follows into what goes on with Mists of Pandaria, like in a major sense, and it's more of a bridge expansion, uh, getting us to ninety, and then possibly the next expansion, which will hopefully be another ten episodes or ten. Whatever, we get to level 99 in that expansion, and we finally face Largaris. So hopefully it'll be some kind of bridge, because honestly, I can't handle well, too many more WoW expansions. I well, need war- I, I'm sorry, I need Warcraft 4. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, like, I'm so tired of the that. MMORPGs. I just want my normal old RTS back the way things used to be. But I may I, uh, may I, I agree as well. well yeah! Well, I do have one suggestion, one theory. What if we don't kill Deathwing and he's the eye uh, and we just weaken him? And he's the boss. We'll fight Deathwing. I mean, that's what. <laughs> that's a stupid question. No, no, no. And then, and what then if we don't kill boss. Deathwing? Well, then we're gonna and face him again. The boss, and then he's the boss of this Impendary all over again. Yeah. Then, yeah. then a, a lot of people are gonna cry and say that Blizzard are just rehashing old bosses again. <laughs> Damn. Uh, Wait, like, oh yeah, I guess they did rehash. <laughs> like they've never um, done that before. Uh, yeah, uh, I they... was play. All right. I don't know if we're done with the question or not. We, yeah, I'm, I'm done with it. Are you done with it? Because I'm done with it. <laughs> I'm done with it. I'm done with it. I got my hands off it. And <laughs> I was. <laughs> Hello, was... Norteso Radio. First off, I love your show. Well, we love you too. Now for the question at hand. After the orcs invaded Azeroth and Kargoth Bladefist was in control of the Hellfire Citadel, how did the orcs get corrupted by demon blood? Was it Magtheridon that got enslaved and they drank his blood, or did they get the demon blood from Aganar before they enslaved Magtheridon? Gul'dan was the first to drink the demon blood. At the time, he was an apprentice shaman to Ner'zhul, who took it upon himself upon finding these increase or not increase but these very mystifying powers with kill Jaden I believe I'm not positive or perhaps it was, it was kill Ar- Jaden it wasn't Archimon uh, but it, I think it might have been Sargeras actually mentally speaking to them I don't think it, maybe it was kill Jaden I don't remember exactly but essentially what oh, happened yeah, it was, was kill Jaden I, I get it now because of he, his deceiver title I almost forgot about it. he's done that twice now yeah. Brad, right. want to take it on? So, as a side question, I'd also like to ask what happened with Jaina Proudmore, Muradin, Bronzebeard, and all the other lore characters in the Lich King fight? I mean, Jaina was in love with Arthas, and Muradin Bronzebeard was his friend and could not stop him to claim Frostborn. Sylvanas, so I understand that she couldn't be there as the Horde didn't trust her after what happened at the Wrathgate, but the other characters should be there. Was this just an in the game that it didn't happen, and it uh, they actually showed up in books or lore, or and have they actually showed up in books or lore? That's from John. Spelled the right way, J O N. 
Also, before we get into that, I'd just like to quickly have this clarified. We didn't actually, I don't think we answered the name of the pit lord, where they got the demon blood from, so if we could cover that, or just say the name right quickly, so I don't feel like we're, you know, missing out. Leaving something else. I think it was, I, I, best be you can answer it, you're better at this, you're better at this subject. Are you better at the trivia? (laughs) Yes, the trivia. trivia. It was uh, Manoroth, per what Blondie says, and I believe that's it was. That's right. Well. It was Manoroth. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was Manoroth or uh, what's his face, Agonar. No, it was. It was. It was. It was, was Manoroth. All right. So it was Manoroth. Okay. All right. Check. Go so to next. This. Hello. So. I was playing World of Warcraft. Oh, 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 yeah, and was. Did. We what? didn't answer the second question. I just made you answer the first question. Oh, we didn't. You're right. All right. Uh, Jaina so, Proudmore. Uh, well, Murden Bronzebeard is. Uh, he's kind of stoned right now, isn't he? Oh, no, that's Magni. No, that's Murden. Murden's uh, one of the ruling council members, isn't he? Yeah, yeah I think. He is. But where was he during the Lich King fight? Not Catacomb. Was Probably it dealing with the uh, Frost Dwarf deal. Yeah, uh, because Jekka? remember. Jaina was well. She was with you the entire time as you were climbing through uh, Ice Crown Citadel. I, I don't know. She she should yeah. have been there. There, you can say she was there. I think Blizzard didn't want to. I think what they were trying to go for was a Tyrion versus a good versus bad, not a oh my god, this is a soap opera. It's so yeah, and uh, and and uh, Murden was on the boat. I'm on a boat, bitch. Boat and. <laughs> They were, look. I mean, all of those characters, all of those characters had some part to play in taking down the Lich King. Just because they weren't weren't shown like massively in game doesn't mean that they didn't do anything. And it doesn't mean that they weren't there. I mean, you have to think when we went to fight the Lich King, lore wise. I mean, this was a massive coalition of multiple forces, multiple factions, and multiple races. This was one of the biggest gatherings of multicultural, multiracial or mili- militaries. The, the world of Azeroth had ever seen. I mean, this was massive, and it was all to fight the Lich King. So everyone played a part. No matter how big or small it was in-game, everyone played a part. Except for Sylvanas, who was grounded in Undercity. Yeah. Well, even she played her own little part. I guess she did. Next question. Nope. Maybe? Yes. Hello! I was playing World uh, of Warcraft the other day and was wondering, what is the lore behind the Harpies and the Quillbor and the Silithid and the Centaur? What do they worship or believe in? Where did they come from? Where is their history and events? Okay, it's Harpies. Insane. I got Harpies, and uh, I got Quillbor. And I'm going to let Best be answer Silithid, and you can have Centaur, because I don't know much about them. But, Harpies, Cursed Night Elves, uh, they have many details about how they, why they got cursed, but I'm not exactly positive of them right now. I don't want to cheat, so I think it has something in, to do with them exclaiming beauty. But the Quillbore, I know for a fact, they they were basically what the children of uh, the uh, ancient, the big ass uh, fucking. Boar in the War of the Ancients. Big ass boar. Uh, you fight him in Razorfin Crawl, I think, or down. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to remember his name. So an I, I believe. I think it starts with an A, right? Like it's like. A, yeah, I'm gonna like get him. A- I'm gonna get him. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, um, the Centaur are the children of Cenarius. There's sons, sub, centaurs, and uh, uh, princess theaters. So there's that, and uh, Silithid are the descendants of the Akir. Also, I did end up cheating. Uh, direct quote: <laughs> Apparently, legends about harpies. Now, I, I, I keyword legends. This may or may not be wrecked on because it says legends, but they claim they descend from a group of female night elves who betrayed Queen Azara and were cursed as punishment. Apparently, someone yeah. wants to know the lore of Murlocs. America, we already answered this last, like, I think for two episodes in a row we've done this. 
Yeah. <laughs> The two of us all in the row. We went murder, murder, fucking, murder, murder, murder. Fucking Murlocs. <laughs> fucking hate Murlocs. Damn Murlocs. Uh, Pride and but wait, this lore crew. So, being the lore hounds you all are, you've obviously heard of the Dark Riders of Duskwood. Creepy things never seen in game. Cause all the problems in Duskwood. Strange resemblance to the Black Riders in Lord of the Rings. Anyways, I was wondering, what do you think Blizzard will do with these guys? Maybe make them a raid in an upcoming expansion, or will they maybe explain why they are really there? Your thoughts and ideas are appreciated. And that oh, is from Nick. Nick. And that is also our last. This is also our last question. Oh. Because our producer, our producer is a is a hard ass. Big <laughs> meanie face, as the children say nowadays. Anyways. Yes, he has a giant meanie face, and he deserves to be clocked in the face by a bro hoof. If anything, I would have to say that they would not become an expansion, or not an expansion, a raid in the new expansion. They would probably become a quest line in order to delve deeper into the story of them, but they wouldn't be involved in a full blown raid. A full blown raid. Maybe a miniature one for like level 20s or so, but not a full one. Uh huh. But. I do believe that the Dark Riders of Duskwood, they are a pretty big, you know, set of people from... They're a giant-ass deal, in my opinion. I mean, they corrupted an entire... They corrupted all of Deadwind Pass and Duskwood, and, you know, it was... They are a pretty damn big deal. Alright. Well... Right on. We gotta so, go because uh, producers is yeah. Deserves, Blondie's, is Blondie's being a hard ass about all this. It's like you gotta get you guys shut the fuck up now. We gotta move on to another show. We gotta move on. I'm just kidding. We love you, Blondie. Don't 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 take it seriously. Uh, d- d- don't, 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 don't worry about Shang. He's don't fired anyway. Yeah. So uh, I am. I am. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry that- about. It. That is the show of Boy There's Lore, Season 3, Episode 5. I want to say this is 5, right? Because if I'm wrong, yeah, it's, it's 5. Uh, yeah, yeah, Episode 5. That is, well, that's uh, six weeks. We're, into, we're six weeks into Season 3, guys. Like, wow. Already. Yeah. Already. Mm-hmm. Wow, and there's like some massive uh, microphone. Fast, B. Yeah, why don't you just mute yourself so I can uh, end the show? How about that? Yeah, how's about that, Perfect. bro? Perfect. All right. Uh, that has been the show here on Boway There's Lore on Nordiso Radio at nordisoradio.com. Don't forget to tune in to uh, OMFG Kata, youtube.com forward slash OMFG Kata. There's a special announcement coming up very soon, very quickly. Just going to go ahead and start that upload as soon as this deal is over with. And uh, that'll be pushed live at any possible minute. If you want the uh, quick update as soon as it goes live, you can stick around right here in the IRC. And uh, there's actually another show coming on right after us. So stay tuned for that as well. I also to want to go ahead and thank all of you guys for listening and tuning into the show. For those listening on YouTube, we appreciate you just as much. And don't forget that even you can get involved with the show by sending us an email at lore at omfg.fm. This isn't uh, just something for the live listeners. It's for you, too. You get to listen to this a uh, couple of days after they do. And, you know, so, yeah. be recorded. And you get it, yeah. and you get your question recorded, too. So, yeah, that, you get so. to listen to our wonderful, our masculine wonderful, voices. wonderful, masculine voices. Mm. Indeed. Um, yeah. Also, if you actually, uh, if you want to send in, like, a video question or an audio question, you can do that, too. Don't be afraid. I put my voice out on the interwebs, uh daily. I have for a couple of years now. Ever since I was wee little boy. Indeed. Man, that was so, uh, that, that's the show. I mean, uh, we're like 4.59 right now, and Blondie's like, oh my god, oh my god, we're gonna be late, we're gonna be late. So, uh, we gotta head out, guys, but uh, we once again, we appreciate you listening. This has been Pride, Best Beat, and Shang right here on But Wait, There's Lore on Nordiso Radio at nordisoradio.com. Love y'all. I went with my alt on a blood furnace run The druid we had was tanking his cat He needed on cloth and he needed on blade Said I'll sell it at the auction house You hear them in barons in Outland they roam Spamming the trade channel begging for gold They can't be avoided, they never will change 
attention Don't let the tarts get you down Don't let the tarts get you down For the daily slave pens a hunter joined in Aspect of the pack, aggressive on pet He pulled to more groups and after we wiped He asked why he didn't get healed You hear the mimbarans in Outland, they roam Leaving your pickups and stealing your loot They can't be avoided, they never will change Don't let the tarts get you down Don't let the tarts get you down In war, on Gulch, I defended our flag A rogue spoke his mind with caps in the chat Up on the roof, the alleys cut close He stealth and the flag was returned You hear the mid-barons in Outland, they roam Passive in metal grounds, camping your corpse They can't be avoided, they never will change Don't let the tarts get you down Don't let the tarts get you down Tars get you down. Don't let the tars get you down. Don't let the tars get you down. Don't let the tars get you down.